time. Spider, 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 see if our red zone roll. Here comes spider, see if our red zone roll. How cool is that? <laughs> I got that king at Expo 67. <laughs> Just missed the guess who. Can you imagine? Share the Land album. They, they were featured at Expo 67 in Montreal. We're up in a school uh, excursion, you know, grade 11 academic. And uh, they played, we left, uh, I think, on a Thursday, and they played Friday night. Or we left on a Friday, and they played Saturday night. Anyway, they had 40,000 people. They opened with Bus Rider. <laughs> uh, and the Share the Land album was really huge then. They were on Johnny Cash show. Uh, they did Hand Me Down World and Sure the Land Hand Me Down World was a big worldwide international hit. Um, the album was very successful for them, the follow up to American Woman album, but I miss that. Like, you know, I miss that. You know, like, that, I never, I keep thinking about that. I mean, if I would have been there, because I was a real Guess Who fan. We all were growing up. I mean, we idolized them. I mean, they, they, uh, they inspired us. They're the reason I was in a band. Uh, I'm ser seriously, what they did was unbelievable. I mean, they set the president and they outsold the Beatles, the Doors, the Stones. Uh, in Cretans in 1969-70, they had the highest record sales in the world. The Guess Who from Canada. And how they get their name with the question mark, it's really interesting. Because it was Guess Who and the question mark when Shaking All Over was their first international hit when they were in high school uh, around the world actually it was a huge hit and they had the question mark the guess who they wanted to think they were British or, or American and then some DJ down so said oh we just kind of call them the guess who you know that's how they get their name pretty pretty uh, catchy brand name too really and truly um, I get all their vinyl I have all the guess who on CD and uh, being retired you know I, I, I listen to them all the time. I love them, my favorite band. I was listening to them this morning, uh, some of their live stuff they did live, unbelievable. I was listening to, you know, I love when they played at the SARS, you know, in front of like 100,000, when they did um, No American Woman and then ended with No Time, and the crowd, the crowd went crazy. They, they, and younger people too, they love the Guess Who, and around the world too, they're internationally famous, around the world they're being played. They, the Guess Who are being played practically every day around the world. I mean, I think these eyes, Burton coming said now it's hit like a, close to over five, almost six million plays. Imagine. They won numerous BMI awards for songs being played over a million times on the radio. I mean, I think these eyes is right up there in the top five or something ever played. Uh, I mean, they have classics and they're timeless, but we're very, very proud, you know, to raise a Canadian flag for the guests who, who, who started the whole Canadian music industry really and put all the other Canadian musicians that followed like Rush, Neil Young, all of them, Brian Adams, all on the map, really. You know, they owe a debt to them. Anyway, that's enough of my rant, okay, on the Guess Who, but very, I'm very proud to be a, a Canadian when I listen to the Guess Who and, and someone talked, there was a talk show one time, there was a question, how do you feel most uh, Canadian and this is before this, this terrorist foolishness going on in France and the guy called and said, well, I was in, I was in Paris, France. I walked in a hotel and they played in Shirley Land for the Guess Who. He said, that's how I feel. So Canadian. So they are, you know, it will be a sad day Burton Cummings dies. You know, there'll probably be a state funeral, funeral really. I mean, uh, but anyway, talk a little more about the Guess Who sometime. But I'll get, I'm going to get into the session and uh, semifinals are over. And uh, so we're going to talk about that and uh, a few other things. And, uh, just in my last, uh, my last, uh, I always, if I make any mistakes, I always correct it, right? And uh, I made a mistake, just a simple mistake, okay? When I was talking about CFL Red Zone Rule in a nutshell, and, you know, periodically I said I'm probably going to not go over the game, but period, period, periodically, sorry, I will. I will. I hope the sun doesn't get in, in our eyes today. Anyway. When I said Spider CFO Red Zone Rule in a nutshell, simply an enforcement rule, CFO teams will play exciting CFO three down football in the red zone to score touchdowns if the third down is needed and if stopped on third down in the red zone, still maintaining possession of the ball, they will get Spider CFO Red Zone Rule kick. And somehow it didn't come off my, uh, well, actually, Spider CFO Red Zone, red zone kick. Uh, and, and, I, and I said Spider CFO Red Zone Rule, <laughs> and I left out the kick. But, but then I went on to explain. Uh, it um, and, and in more detail. So, 
I put emphasis on my, my spider super red thermal kick. That's that's not for downs, by the way, and I went over that uh, in depth. Okay, uh, and what's so phenomenal about my spider super red thermal that it still, you know, remarkably preserves that three down game. That's what's phenomenal. And I'll tell you one thing: on, on the on the we're getting a lot of harsh sun in here. I'm sorry, but we'll see if we get through this. I I I I don't know if it's on my face or where it is. Probably. What a drag, you know. I should have got in earlier this morning and done this, but this is what's happening. Uh, another c catastrophe here for the, with the light. It's terrible. Um, I don't know if I can do anything about it or not. I don't think because it's coming in. I don't know where it's coming in from. Uh, anyway, we'll just kind of go with it, okay? Anyway, so uh, this is going to be a session, and I'll do another one after the, the Western and, and the Eastern. Uh, finals, okay, and then after the Great Cup. So anyway, I, too bad that the sun go away, okay. Come back another day. But anyway, so in the in the Saskatchewan Rough Rider uh, Stampeder uh, semifinal in Saskatchewan, well, was, they say it was twenty four thousand, but they probably looked more about twenty twenty two. But anyway, the the, the Stampeders were the better team in that game, although they they. they you know, they, they gave the game to them because they should have won the game. Saskatchewan or Friday shouldn't have won the game. It, for Jared, all four interceptions, you, you, how do you possibly win a game? He even said that a, after the game during the press, post press conference. But, but the thing is, the reason they won the game is Bowley by Mitchell threw two interceptions and they, excuse me, had two fumbles. And Lemon got thrown out of the game foolishly. And Saskatchewan chose to take the ball again and kick an on, onside kick. and uh, and they got it. There's only 25% chance. How did they get that? So, I mean, uh, see if I mean Calgary Stan Police coaching. Come on, you, you should have been ready for that. But anyway, make a long story, story short. Uh, on the game, uh, Paredes had had uh, only four missed field goals all year, and he had three, three uh, during the game. So, and the one in overtime. That cost him dearly, and Bowley by Mitchell. I mean, he, in, in the first half, by the way, it was brutal football. It was like it, it didn't sell CFL three down get down football. It actually sucked. Like my son said, it sucked. It was brutal. But the second half was phenomenal. Really, it was fantastic football. And in the overtime, it was really exciting. They had over a million viewers, by the way. That's why, because of the second half. But uh, uh, Bowley by Mitchell uh, in the second half played a lot better and threw some Bowley by Mitchell the pass. Big passes to uh, Bing Bingleton, but in the overtime he threw, tried to throw two in the end zone that were just brutal. They were so off target. They were outside, the, the, you know, the the sideline, and uh, and uh, one really bad, and one also the same, and out of like over his head and off target, and it, they they were they weren't well thrown at all. So I, I you know. It's too bad because, and then, you know, the one yard, I mean, I think that riders, definitely the referees are for them. I mean, if that would have been a rider, you know, uh, pushing, uh, uh, took his hand and, and Lemon and pushed his palm of his hand into the face max of the riders, that, uh, after, right at, at the end of the first half in his face, if that would have been reversed, they wouldn't have, they wouldn't have threw him out of the game. Lemon was important because he's one of the better defensive you know, a lineman uh, on the Stampeders, so that hurt him. But, uh, and then when, you know, Mayer, one yard, he was, and then, like, how, how does a football hit the, hit the, when that measurement hit the, you know, the measurement pole, and it's not a first down? And then they jerk around with it and, 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 and manipulate it, so it's an inch short or something. So, so they, the ball goes to Saskatchewan. That was not right. That was, that was fixed. And there was another play that I don't know why uh, Steve Dick, uh, Dave Dickinson didn't call pass interference. They called, uh, and it was no pass. And this guy said he didn't touch it, and it didn't even show the TSN wouldn't even show the replay slow mo. And I and, and he didn't touch it. It wasn't pass interference. We had started the game. I think it was the first quarter. And 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 the, and the thing is, what, Dave Dickinson didn't challenge it. I don't understand why. But. They did. The Saskatchewan played a lot better in special teams, and and the Stamps played horrible in special teams. They, I think, because of the double vaccine uh, mandate, they couldn't get uh, Henry in or Bain in because the Rock is out for the year with an ACL, 
and they had to put a, 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 a Canadian ratio player back there, and then he, I think it went off him, I believe. I don't think it was Bingleton, I think it was him. Uh, I have to check about him. Some thought it was Bingleton, but I'm not sure. Uh, but I think it was a Canadian ratio player. Anyway, I hit his helmet. Anyway, and it was very, they had, they had horrible uh, returns. I mean, I mean, a few yards, but it was horrible. And that's why another reason the Saskatchewan Rough Riders won. Um, and so, sour grapes, but I mean, they, they gave it to them. Calgary gave it to them. I mean, even, I, th I think Saskatchewan played worse than Calgary. Other than, you know, I mean, the field goals is what I think killed uh, Calgary, the missed field goals. But still, Calgary should have won. Saskatchewan not, didn't uh, really, I, I think Calgary deserved to win that game. And Saskatchewan actually were given the game. That's my opinion. But they, they but hey, it's a score. They went overtime, double overtime, and it's a score that counts. And uh, so that's how it ended. Uh, but 33-30, but, uh, but Saskatchewan now in tough, like, like Calgary would have been if they would have won with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, okay, in Winnipeg for the Western Final. I think that would be a big play. Crowd, even in Toronto, Toronto Argonauts uh, apparently, uh, um, they're open the upper deck and, and uh, the end that's always, the side that's always closed, but uh, they got to get their prices right. I think they got their prices set up wrong right up there. So people were complaining on the CFL site about the pricing, eighty-six dollars, and you know they should up in the upper bowl. It should be cheaper because uh, someone said they got one for fifty-six, uh, even lower. So I don't understand what the Toronto Argonauts come on. Give it the program. You can sell a lot more tickets. Price it right, okay? And I'm doing a prediction right here. I predicted my son, and he says, "Why do you say that, Dad?" I'm predicting that the Toronto Argonauts win win uh, win the Grey Cup. I'm predicting it right here. My son wanted to know why I'm saying that. I'm saying that because, and I asked him, do you still owe your, uh, because the, your uh, Damon Allen, uh, I bought him a uh, uh, sweater, and uh, he says, yes, Dad, I do, because uh, we were to the Argonaut uh, Montreal Alouette uh, Eastern Final and had 43,000, um, and actually they were going to allow us to meet Damon Allen because I get to know one of the marketing guys, and that's how I got good tickets and everything. Uh, uh, paid for them, but anyway, that was pretty exciting. But they lost, so we didn't get to see a Damon Allen. But we met him when he was here at Touchdown Atlantic, and shook his hand. And Pinball Clemens too. Uh, so for I like Pinball Clemens. So I, I think because uh, Bethel Thompson, Thompson, I think he's a pretty good quarterback. I think he's got a good arm. He can throw the ball long and and pretty accurate. And uh, and they're six and one at home. That's what I said to my son. And they got they they got they get some really good Canadian content players. They're pretty solid uh, in that department. Um, and uh, also uh, uh, Rogers and Daniels. I mean, they Stan Peter. They're top receivers. I mean, and they were in Grey Cups and they, they won a Grey Cup. You know, when they were the Calgary Stampeders. So, like, I I think the Argonauts are going to beat Hamilton, and I think they're going to beat Winnipeg. That's my prediction. That's what I, I believe. Um, in the Grey Cup in, in Hamilton. That will be, by, unfortunately, the smallest Grey Cup ever, either 22,500 seats, and then I think they, in the end zone, because of the uh, plaza there, they, they put 24,000, but that's going to be the capacity. This will be the smallest Grey Cup ever. I, maybe not ever, because years and years and years ago, I think they had crowds like that to Grey Cups, you know, way, way back, you know, in, in the 50s. And so forth, and maybe early '60s, but um, uh, so it it will be. Uh, but I think in the early '60s there were more capacity than that. But anyway, uh, it's still what it is because of this China virus thing, and there, there's more variants now coming. Of course, now they're putting more fare, and everybody get the jab so they could collect the money. You know, take the loot. You know, but you know. Just keep stacking up. They've been billion, uh, millions of dollars in, uh, in in their bank accounts. You know, that's you know everybody's allowed to their opinion. By their opinion, you know, um, facts and the and the real truth. And uh, I I don't I really don't trust what's going on with this. I really don't. I don't trust it at all. It this it's too fishy, and a lot of people are saying that. 
So anyway, but uh, they're forcing people to get vaccinated, they're going to lose their jobs. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, you assume we'll be, well, you can't go to a restaurant if you're not vaccinated. You can't go to a sporting event inside or out and everything. That's why in Saskatchewan there's so many empty seats and in Helmand so many empty seats. And then I think in the Western Finals they're going to have the same problem. But I think in, in Winnipeg it's, 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 it's very, they're very liberal there and uh, I think a lot of people are vaccinated. But we'll see. So anyway, I, I just want to talk a little bit about uh, um, um, what my son said about my rule. We were texting during the Hamilton Tiger Gag and Montreal Alouette game, and I'm going to talk about uh, just briefly because the Alouette started well, but it got pretty boring. It was snowing. They said it was 21, 22,000. Only holds 22,000. There was no more than 12,000 people there. Uh, 12, 14 would be mo the most, you know. They don't report it accur accurately on the attendance. Uh, but anyway, it became a very boring game, that game, that uh, East Eastern semifinal. Very, very boring. I was texting my son back and forth, and we were talking about different things. Uh, and here's a text that we were talking about my CFL Red Star Mole. And, uh, and because uh, after the game, the Montreal Alouette player was saying how brutal they were in the red zone. And it was brutal in the red zone. And even in the, the Western semifinal, it, was, it wasn't it was in the red zone. There was, you know, easy chip shot field goals. You know, after, you know, two down or second down stop in the red zone. And unless they're on the one yard line, they don't go for it. They kick another non-eventful, you know, predictable, boring, easy chip shot field goal. My son was, we're talking about my CFO Red Zone rule, uh, you know, we're back and forth texting during the Eastern Final in Hamilton, and my son says, it's obvious the CFL needs to change. They will be, there, there will be no CFL soon um, if they continue on the path they are on. My, your rule, he's talking, my son is talking about my CFO Red Zone rule, he says, your rule, Dad, could completely revamp the league, fans, interest, and the excitement of the game. And it's like that and younger generation Bomber fan told me it's a perfect ejection for a CFL three-down game. And my son says, you, you are given the CFL the tools, meaning my CFL Reds Arm rule, and in my, pre, in my presentation that uh, this, it's going to be, that's it's going to the CFL Innovation Rules Committee in 2020. So my son says, you're given the CFL the tools, they just need to apply it. And he's right. And he's right. And then, and then I, I give him an analogy uh, about, uh, I was saying something here. Um, but I said, we we'll work naturally and perfectly with three-down football like it was meant for and tailor made for CFL three-down football. That still remarkably, remarkably preserves a three-down game. These key words that I use that are so strong and so pertinent are, are on the money. I'm, I'm texting my son back and saying, yet still ignored and pushed aside. Just shows, well, that was pre previous, okay, a text, okay. But now it's, it's, uh, uh, it's going to be presented to the CFL Innovation Rules Committee. But it should be made, it should be part of a CFL three down game right now. And I'm back to one of my previous section sessions last week or so, talking about uh, Mr. Uh, Johnson. And Mr. Johnson uh, actually was really sold on my CFL red zone rule, and Mr. McDonald. And Mr. Johnson wanted to make it made to, he really did. And our, he presented it, and he was going to then, he put together the new innovation rules committee, and he was the, the chair of it and, and the top guy. And he had a lot of clout, and he was going to present it again, and he was going to, because he, he, he preserved it, actually, you know, he, uh, because he didn't allow it to go to the vote, vote the first time when he first presented it, my CFL Reds are mole. And, uh, and then I refined it and added the option provision part, so I, now I have the final finished product. But at that point, he reserved it um, and pr to protect it. Uh, and then was going to present it to his new innovation rules committee that he was head of, and 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 on 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 bringing in new exciting, uh, innovative, and more entertaining and more uh, exciting new CFL rule to our game. And he was he really wanted my CFL Red Storm rule made part of the CFL three down game big time. And he told me that, and he and he told me that people that were on 
his, his innovation rules committee was put on that were sold on my CFL Red Zone rule. So it would have went through and it would be now part of our CFL three down game if, 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 if Mr. Johnson would have stayed. And I, I think he was qualified for the for the CF, for the become the CFL commissioner, commissioner. I think that's why he was pushed out. Uh, but uh, you know, you know, uh, it's too bad because uh, it would have been would have been amazing if that was made part of a CFL three down game. Because I looked at the Riders game and Stamps went Eastern um, the uh, Western semifinal last weekend. It would have been a lot better with my CFL Red Zone rule. My son, we, he talked about these buddies that he was watching the game with in Calgary. They said, there's, there's your dad's spider CFL Red Zone rule. It should be applied. Another easy chip shot field goal and another boring second down stop in the red zone. They won't go for it. And, uh, and uh, they were saying it, it would make their game a lot better. And that game would have been even a lot better with my CFL Red Zone rule because it separates the men from the, bo from the boys. It does. It separates the men from the boys. Here we go with the sun again. It's brutal. Come on, get out of here. <laughs> anyway, so I, I, I sent it. Um, I'll just tell uh, another text back to him on an analogy about something I was thinking about that just came to my head in relation to my CFO Red Star Bowl. And my son sent me um, a text back last night when we were talking about it. He talk, called me on the phone when we were talking about it. And it's so true. Uh, uh, I'm just going to go roll down to it uh, where it is so I can read it to you. It's just short. Uh, yeah, here it is. Anyway, I was talking to him about, I sent him a text and we were talking about it on the phone. I, I explained it to him in, in more depth about, uh, you know, okay, in the red zone, the problem with the CFL is they're basically playing two down football. And if they're not on the one yard line, they're not going to use a third down. Although the rule is there and they can, but they don't. And, and, and they don't do in the second, the three, the four, the five, and, and right up to the, the 20, they don't. So basically through the one yard line, they go for it and third down. So they're basically playing with two downs in the red zone. And, and I was saying to my son, in the NFL, four downs in the red zone is too many downs. It's too many downs. It's, it, 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 it's too easy. So that's why my CFL red zone rule, enforcement rule is so important because they're playing with three downs in the red zone. And like my son said, uh, the score touchdown if they need the third down. And my son said something really on the money. And he, and he says, Dad, it's the perfect number on your analogy. So he's saying my CFL red zone rule, which is, is playing exciting CFL three down football. And if you're in the red zone, you need the third down, you go for the touchdown on third down. He said, that's the per perfect number in the red zone. In the, in the professional game of football. And you know what? That, it even, you know, I think that makes my CFL Red Zone rule, rule even bigger and bigger. Now, you know, when, the, when that analogy that, uh, that I come up with. So I'm glad I was thinking about that because that's another big selling feature I should add to my 10 super features and benefits somewhere is just add it in. Boy, oh boy, that sun is going to ruin the session. I hope not. Oh my gosh. I mean, everything is washed out here. It's brutal. I, so I hope I, I'm going to have to let it go. I mean, because I don't do remakes. Everything is uh, live takes, but uh, it's too bad. Um, it's too bad that this turned out like this. I'm very sorry about that. So we got a few minutes left. So, yeah, you know, it's going to be interesting uh, to see what happens. Uh, I can turn down the light a little bit. I don't know if that does anything, but I think we need probably a little more to fill in the highlights and so forth because of the shadow, because of the sun and the backlight problem, okay? But, okay, that's okay. <laughs> that's all right. Here I am with my friggin' bifocals on the whole time. It's another reason maybe this is not so good. My bifocals on the whole time of the session. I don't know why I did that. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. But anyway, uh, it is what it is. Um, and you get the, these lighting problems here. It's it's brutal when the sun gets in here. It's really hard with the lighting to know exactly when to do this. So you almost need a cloudy day, and then adjust the blinds and so forth because of the monitors. You need a cloudy day. But I'm sorry I had these glasses on because that those are for reading. 
Okay, but maybe I did have, maybe, look, I don't even know. Maybe I've had them on and I put these on to read this. Of course I would. Yes, I must have had them on. What am I thinking about? Come on now, spider. Get with the program. Anyway, uh, the Canadian ratio, again, uh, definitely a problem uh, for the CFL. Huge, huge problem that I don't know what's going to happen with the, the new... Uh, the new Canadian Players Association collective bargaining agreement uh, with that. Uh, I mean, you know, I mean, they say it's seven, but it's not. It's ten. They change it to ten. They keep covering that up. And I notice the announcers now, you know, they're pushing the Canadian players and Canadian rate. I mean, in Canada, yes, that's good. But come on, you, you TSN, you don't even do any co really good coverage on the CFL, and you, and you have exclusive rights to all their games. Come on, on the, when I like I say, when I hear in radio, all you hear is NFL. Why aren't they talking doing on radio across Canada talking about the CFL semifinals, and 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 the Western final, and the and the and the Eastern final coming up, and the Grey Cup? Why aren't they talking about? Why don't they have the, the CFL game, okay, on CTV? Okay, and why it's like this is a problem in, in Canada. In the United States, they support their, 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 the NFL. They support college football and high school football hugely. And, and here, like, it's brutal. You, you don't support it. You know, you, all you do is run it down. The media don't even support it. They run it down. Uh, how, do, how do you sell our CFL three-down game of football uh, with, you know, with running it down in the media in Canada? Come on. Anyway... CFL, you need Spider CFL Reds Arm Roll big time to make our CFL three down game a lot better and a lot more entertaining.